Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. The Golden State Warriors laid a stinker in Utah, and they lost to the Jazz 111-85 on the front end of a back-to-back. They didn't have Clay Thompson. He doesn't play back-to-back nights still, so of course they decided to play him at home against the Knicks. And they didn't have Draymond Green, of course, James Wiseman, Andre Godala is out still with that back issue. And they didn't have Nemanja Bielica. But still, they had a bunch of healthy dudes and they had a bunch of firepower. They had Steph, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Otto Porter Jr., Kaminga. So they started off pretty strong. They built a big lead. And the Utah Jazz, they, earlier in the day, had traded Joe Inglis, who tore his ACL not too long ago and was out for the season. They traded him to Portland. And you could tell there was kind of like this sadness, you know, that they had low energy. So the Warriors jumped on them. But the thing is, the Warriors started playing a little bit sloppy and the Jazz got back into it and then they got fired up and then they looked around and they realized that they could definitely beat this Warriors team because the Warriors didn't have that much energy and they weren't shooting that well overall. Steph was only five for 13. Jordan Poole was five for 14. Damian Lee was 0 for 7. After that initial burst, the Warriors, they were kind of like hanging around for a while. And then in the third quarter with the subs in, with the youngsters in, They let the rope slip, and the fourth quarter just became a blowout. So it was just one of those nights. The Jazz, I'm guessing, if I just want to play pop psychologist, the Jazz were kind of bummed out at the beginning of the game. And then once they had a chance, once they had some hope, a glimmer of winning this game, they just really, really wanted it more than the Warriors did. Plain and simple. And it sucks. Yeah, it kind of sucks to watch. But it is what it is. You move on. The Warriors are now 41-14, and officially three and a half games behind the Phoenix Suns. So the Warriors have 27 games left. The stretch run really begins after the All-Star game. But looking forward, looking ahead, again, just preaching everything that I've been saying all season. It's about the health. It's about getting the young guys and the new guys acclimated to pressure situations. And it's about securing home court advantage as long as possible in the playoffs. This game didn't tell me too much, to be honest. I guess one thing is if the Warriors don't have Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andre Godala, then they're not going to win the title, right? (laughs) Like that's pretty much it. So that's not a surprise. And Utah, who had been whooped by the Warriors the last couple of times they played, clearly wanted some revenge. The Warriors did get beat up by Hassan Whiteside in the paint. The dude had seven blocks. He just kept swatting everything. The Warriors kept coming at him, which they should, but he just kept batting everything away. So credit to him. He had 17 boards too. And the Warriors didn't have anybody to match up with him. They didn't even have Bielitsa because he's hurt. So they're pretty much left with Kavon Looney, Jonathan Kaminga, and Juan Toscano Anderson (laughs) to play center minutes, you know? And it hurt them, right? It hurt them. They just got beat up on the inside. This felt like the old school pre-Draymond small ball Warriors teams, you know? Like the small ball run TMC teams that couldn't really play a lick of defense or the small ball we believe team that got beat up by Carlos Boozer and the Utah Jazz in the second round of the 2007 playoffs. Thursday is the trade deadline, so some people might be clamoring all of a sudden for a trade to get a big man, but I just still don't see it happening. (laughs) I'm pretty sure the Warriors will stand pat. They will not make a panic move. Although, I'll be honest, like, hey, it would be nice to have someone like Marquise Chris at the ready. I'm totally fine (laughs) jettisoning like Damian Lee if we have to, you know? I feel like Moses Moody is already better than him. Anyway, that's all I got on the game. I want to talk about a couple other things. James Wiseman finally, finally has been cleared for contact. So he's played three on three, two days in a row. He played on Tuesday and then he played before the game on Wednesday. 
and everything seems to be going fine. There's no setbacks, there's no issues. So those are all positives. Warriors fans have been waiting for that word contact since uh, the fall. <laughs> and then when he had that issue in December, he had to get his knee flushed or whatever for loose bodies. It pushed his timeline back. So this is all positive. And, you know, obviously this is a game where it would have been nice to have a 240 pound seven footer in there, especially an athletic one to give Hassan Whiteside somebody his own size to fight against, you know, to deal with. But those are all great things. And considering the fact that the guy taken after James Wiseman, Lamella Ball, just got picked as an Eastern Conference replacement for the All-Star game, it's about time, you know? Again, you don't want to rush anybody because that kid has a long career ahead of him. And I've always still believed in that kid's talent. So as long as he can stay healthy, I mean, we all want to see that. You know, I said when he got injured last season that when you see somebody who has so much potential, like a vast amount of potential, you want to see that. <laughs> you know, you want to see what that looks like. You want to see somebody develop. It's like, when a great musician dies young, beyond the loss of that person, you feel like you don't get to see what that person could have created, the, their body of work, you know? And that's what I hope to see from someone like James Wiseman because he is so unique, relatively speaking. You know, there's only a handful of dudes his size who can do what he can do, who have his athleticism and his ability. No, he's not polished. Yes, he needs to prove to me that he actually has that dog in him. You know, that's always been my biggest issue, my biggest question mark. So he has a lot of work to do. But if he can get right, get his body right, then I still think that kid, he can be that dude we had always hoped he would be. Obviously, it's all about his body holding up for him, you know? The moment we've been waiting for since September is finally here. In honor of the big game, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56, is giving new customers 56 to 1 odds on either team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code TBPN, and get 56 to 1 odds on either team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code TBPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56. 21 and over, minimum age and local requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for a full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gaming resources. Void where prohibited. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the TN Redline 1-800-889-9789. In Connecticut, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E- NY 467369. And I wanted to address Draymond Green making the All Star team actually. Uh, I just wanted to say that that's awesome because just a couple years ago, you know, when the Warriors had their first down year with Steph's broken hand, no one <laughs> thought Draymond could ever get back to this point. Yes, a lot of it depends. All star selections depend on your team's record, but Draymond got his body right. And of course, yes, he didn't put as much effort in when he was playing with a, a bad team. But to be able to get back into that defensive player of the year conversation, back into being an all-star, playing at the top of his game, it's good to see. It's something that I actually forgot about, that everybody thought he was washed, and he's not. Draymond, of course, is very much one of those players that lifts the other guys around him, but he's also lifted by the talent around him, right? By Steph, by Clay. There's no denying that part of his game and his legacy, but there was so many people kicking the Warriors, kicking Draymond, kicking everybody affiliated while they were down the last couple of years. And it's good to see the guy back on top. And, you know, I listened to his press conference last week and he sounds optimistic about his back, about returning better, stronger, healthier. So fingers crossed, you know, I feel like that dude is up front, straight up, and he wouldn't be able to hide the emotion if he were lying about it. So I'll take that all as a positive. But anyway, 
This has been another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you're so inclined, please do leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we'd love it if you left us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. That would be dope and much appreciated. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time.